Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. Welcome to the Irreverent Grief Guide. You get fairy dust and I get fairy dust and Amelie gets fairy dust. We're reading, I'm reading from this book, Grief Day by Day. I'm on page, I'm still in the introduction. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things I read in here. And uh, she writes, I have made new friends. She's somebody that's has grie grieved and um, and she goes, I have suffered as many grievers have the loss of dear friends who abandoned me or who were unkind to me. Grief does that. I could not agree more. I, one of the things that I found very quickly out when I became a grief counselor is that, hold on, I have to check my lipstick. Thank you. Um, that I found out as a grief counselor pretty early was this weird dichotomy that when you're grieving, when you're in your most heartbroken state, when you feel like you have lost everything and you cannot move, you are devastated by grief. A very interesting thing happens, an interesting phenomenon, and I've seen it repeat several, several times. And people who you did not expect had your fucking back, came through for you, were lifesavers. And friends that you thought had your back, that maybe even being your best friend, like the people that you in your daily life before grief, you truly believed, and it was probably true, that they would have done anything for you. And then you find out anything but this. So those friends were great, amazing, until, and it could be just one, until this happened. And it, it's just, and it, it, it just happens every time, every time, and every time I mention it to somebody when this topic comes up, they have a story for me, and I them. And so it's very, very common. And one of the sad things we have to acknowledge, one of, one of the, uh, for you know how much I love the tasks of mourning, the four tasks of mourning by J. William Warden. And the first task is accept the reality of the loss. And it's very, very interesting that what that means, so, we, so immediately we think, got it, I got it, the person died, great, I got it, I don't, task one done, I never wanna hear about it again. But task one is actually lifelong. And one of the ways that the reality of the loss, what the reality of the loss is, isn't actually what you've lost. Because you think, you know, especially early in grief, we think that we just lost the person. But what we did not realize is all the other fucking things we lost. And um, one example that just popped in my mind real quick was when my best friend died. Ooh, when my best friend died, one of the things that hit me shortly after he died, maybe within the first month or two, it started hitting me that no one was ever gonna call me Little Bit again. That was his nickname for me. And it was super cute. <laughs> as we met in treatment, I'm fucking skinny as fuck. But, and also I'm short, I'm 5'2", so I'm a shorty. But also it's my name, so Elizabeth Little Bit, so it fit in there. And, and I realized no one, uh, no one was gonna ever call me that again. And that is a huge fucking loss. That's a, that's a, there was a lot of love in that nickname. And I had the identity, not of being a little bit, <laughs> I'm over that, but being his person, you know, being his, he called me his sister. Like that identity of being a little bit had lots of significance to me and I lost it and it was devastating. And 
Um, and so for, in that case, accepting the reality of the loss, I understood that he died, but it didn't hit me later of what that meant. So sometimes the reality of the loss is what the loss means, accepting the reality of what it means, what the loss means. And so just as an example, and I will talk definitely more in depth about the first task and all that, but a person may die, let's say a father or mother dies before someone, the child is married. So the father dies before the daughter is married. And she may have already thought of this, but it really starts to hit her that her dad is not going to walk her down the aisle. And that she has to work that task then. She has to incorporate, grieve the reality of that loss, that you don't get to have that. And that is a huge fucking deal. And so one, back to the point of the thing that I read about we lose friends sometimes when we grieve, that we don't realize, but that's another loss. It's another loss that has to be grieved. It's disappointing and it is sad and it is more of task one, accepting the reality of the loss. So I hope that is helpful and we will be talking more and ask me anything you'd like. I'd love to talk to you about anything grief related. Um, any way that I can be helpful would be my honor. Okay, love you, bye.